This video is part of a course on food physics. Here we're talking about microwave heating and it's, uh, it's part one of the two part microwave heating uh, set of videos. This part one is in six sections or six videos. And this first one, uh, this second one now is about microwave propagation in a slab. Again, there are these six sections or six videos on this part on microwave heating, on electromagnetics. This is the one we are about to uh, watch and it has to do with propagation of electromagnetic waves in a simple geometry like a slab. The video before talked about just introduction to microwaves and the video after would be uh, talking about how uh, different uh, materials that's different foods absorb microwaves and therefore heat now we are not talking about electromagnetics inside a home microwave oven that is way too complex to get started the simple situation that we want to consider is not even a thin or a finite kind of size slab. It's a very thick slab that is also called a semi-infinite region, meaning there is a surface, but there is not the other end of it. It's infinitely thick. In that infinitely thick region we are considering electromagnetic waves that are uh, incident this way plane waves normal to the surface and we want to study this very simple situation because for this we can find a little solution uh, easily and we can try to interpret the solution otherwise it's going to be too complex from that simple solution we will try to kind of qualitatively understand what goes on in a microwave oven for this semi-infinite region that we just talked about we want to look at the solution for the electric field and more importantly we want to get the heat generation term that's what we need to know how much heat is generated inside the food or how much are the foods absorbing the electromagnetic energy. So again, we're talking about waves incident uh, normal to this surface of a very thick region. For this, the solution to electric field is given by this equation. So this equation says that the magnitude of the electric field, so E is for electric field, X is this X direction. So at any point X, the magnitude of the electric field, so this is my magnitude E X, okay, that magnitude decays like this exponentially in the material and that is the equation um, that, that you are seeing here so this uh, term before the exponential is the value at the surface so this is the because if you put plug in x equal to zero you would get this value right so this is the value or the maximum value at the surface and then this uh, solution says in this kind of a thick region it decays exponentially and uh, how fast does it decay that of course has to depend on the material so this alpha here depends on material properties and we're going to see later exactly how um, so heat generation because of this electric field remember the fields are oscillating as shown here so the fields are oscillating and we're just we just talked about the magnitude but they're oscillating and that's making the 
water molecule or the ions move that generates the heat so the heat generation equation is given by this one q equal to omega so omega is 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 equal to 2 pi f where f is the frequency of the microwave um, that's uh, being used and then this one is a property of the material it's called dielectric loss we will get into those in more details and then this one is simply the magnitude of the electric field that we keep talking about here this is the magnitude that's squared so we know this magnitude here is related to the magnitude at the surface by this equation so if i plug in this equation into here then what do i get it's the same omega epsilon zero by the way epsilon zero is is an universal constant it's permittivity of the vacuum so we we don't need to get into any more details of that and then epsilon double prime f and then for this one as we substitute as we substitute uh, the exponential expression then we get e x plus squared meaning uh, the value at the surface this is the value at the surface of electric field squared times exponential of minus 2 alpha x 2 alpha because we just squared it and so this you notice that uh, this first part all of this before until the exponential until the exponential everything uh, can be uh, called a q value at x equal to zero because if we plug in x equal to zero here of course the exponential term goes away so we get the we, we get uh, what uh, we are calling q0 so then the interpretation of q0 is the rate of heating at the surface so right here what is my rate of heating the unit for q is going to be watts per meter cube and um, so we can write we can rewrite this equation as q0 times e raised to minus 2 alpha x okay uh, so that says that q varies exponentially inside uh, the this material so heat generation so if i plot heat generation instead of e if i plot heat generation um, on this axis then heat generation is going to uh, drop faster it's going to drop faster than uh, than the um, electric field because it has the exponent of 2 alpha where alpha of course comes from the uh, or related to the material property so this equation we can also write as q equal to q0 times e raised to um, minus x over delta and so what is my delta delta is 1 over 2 alpha so i simply rewrote the equation here i'm sorry for the mess here and so well, I simply rewrote the, the equation and um, delta is, is now called a power penetration depth. So what is the interpretation of delta? We can interpret delta this way at x equal to delta at x equal to delta q is if you plug in delta q is q0 times q0 times e to the minus 1 which is 0.37 times q0 so which means x or delta is the distance 
delta is the distance from here at which point this is my delta at which point only 37 percent of heat is generated compared to the surface and so the interpretation of delta as the power penetration depth is how fast the heat generation decays into the material so then to summarize this slide what we are saying is in this very thick slab with waves incident uh, normal to the surface heat generation is going to drop exponentially this way where delta is my penetration depth now we have to be very careful about that exponential decay solution all we have to do is just not make that slab to be very very thick if it is going to be thin or even a slightly thicker that exponential decay isn't going to be exactly valid and let's look at it so let's see how the microwave power absorbed in a thin slab uh, compares with, with that solution and so in a thin slab versus a not so thin slab it, there's going to be differences what kind of a difference it, so as the waves are traveling inside the uh, the slab as soon as it hits the other end the far end because there is a change of medium some of the waves are going to be reflected some of it is going to be transmitted so now you have incoming reflected uh, incoming wave and the reflected wave and they are going to superimpose or they will interfere with each other, with each other and you're going to get a solution this is from the work uh, of very well known and uh, published work by Ayapa and um, it shows that inside the slab so this is the depth in sample inside the slab instead of it being this kind of a exponential decay which is what we would get if we use this solution q equal to q0 minus x over delta if we use that we're going to get this one and what we are saying is that's not going to be the case because of the superimposition of the two waves the incoming waves and the reflected wave we're going to get something like this so the exponential decay is not going to be valid but you can see things are consistent in the sense that if we do a thicker slab so this slab is thicker right and so here also there's going to be reflection from here and the incoming wave but the reflected one will not be as strong and so the solution that you would get this is the true solution this is not the quick solution that we talked about the exponential decay the true solution looks like this which is closer closer to the exponential decay than the left one so you can think this one is like solving the full maxwell's equation the full-blown equation not approximation and that uh, contrast with the exponential decay that we were talking about and the point we're making here is the true solution for a finite slab finite not infinitely thick but finite regular slab approaches the exponential solution as you make the slab thicker and thicker now if you are not interested in the mathematical details of the solution of the exponential decay the one we showed 
If you're not interested in the mathematical details, you can skip to the end of this video or the very last slide. Otherwise, you can continue and then we're going to derive from scratch the, uh, the exponential decay solution of electric field, which is going to have quite a bit of math. If you are not um, interested in that, you can simply skip to the last slide or the very last few seconds of the video. So once again, if you're not interested in the math, you can skip to the very end of the video, the last few seconds for the summary. Otherwise, this would be the derivation of that uh, exponential decay solution. So it's for plane waves in a semi-infinite region. So plane waves in a very thick region. Let's start the solution. Uh, so what we are doing is we are solving Maxwell's equations, but we are doing this in kind of a really rapid fire way. In a very uh, quickly, we are getting to uh, show where that exponential decay comes from and to have some general idea. Uh, so we're going to do this very quickly. So one of the Maxwell's equation, e equations is the Ampere's law that says changing electric field produces magnetic field. So del cross, which is given by del cross H, is equal to del cross H is equal to del del T of epsilon E. Again, epsilon is a property and a property of the material and E is the electric field and sigma E has to do with the losses or the heat generation in the material. So it's all its conductivity. It's also related to the properties of the uh, um, food and we're going to look at these properties separately. Unfortunately, we had to compartmentalize things to make these uh, these videos uh, short and um, kind of separate ones. Okay, so this is my Ampere's law and then from there, okay, and in the for your benefit, the sigma E is simply related to the dielectric loss, which is one of the properties, and omega is the omega is the frequency. Omega is related to it's the angular frequency related to the frequency of the wave. Okay. Um, so the other law in uh, Maxwell's equations is the Faraday's law, and Faraday's law says time varying magnetic field produces an electric field. So del cross E is del del T of mu H. And, and now we're going to just do algebraic manipulations. So if I take the del cross of this guy, then I get del cross del cross E is equal to del cross of the right hand side here um, which is repeated here and, and now I can take the the mu which is the magnetic property and and so I take it out when, let's say the mu is um, not uh, varying uh, we take it out and uh, and, and then we get minus mu del del t of del cro cross h. So I switch the time derivative and the spatial derivatives. So I get del del t of del cross h. So you notice there's the del cross here. So the del cross goes inside uh, the time derivative. Okay. And so that now del cross h we can write from this equation the ampere's law 
is equal to del del t of epsilon times e epsilon is the electrical property of the material and sigma e we already discussed and so it's del del t of this and further simplifying then i get minus mu epsilon del square e del t square and minus mu epsilon e del e del t okay so now if from vector identity this del cross del cross e this whole thing can be written as del of del dot e minus del square e okay and so let's uh, let's see um so so what that means is this is equal to minus del square e since del dot e is zero that's another one of the maxwell's equation is a del dot e equal to zero um, so if del dot e equal to zero this one drops out and so the next equation then we get del square e so del square e if if we see here it was del cross del cross e so if i plug that in uh, or plug in minus del square e for del cross del cross e into this equation then i get del square e equal to this uh, second derivative of time and the first derivative of time now in 1d then this equation now it's beginning to look a bit manageable um, so we have a 1d problem so e only varies with x so the first term becomes del square e x del x square the second term becomes this and the third term becomes this and and now we can uh, bring all of them on one side and when this exponential uh, the, the electric field i'm sorry is sinusoidal then i can write the value of ex as a value at the uh, surface times j omega t that gives me the phase so the magnitude at the surface or the value at the surface uh, times the uh, phase so when it's sinusoidal when it varies this way that depends on how we are producing the microwaves so in the magnetron for example in the home oven we can produce this sinusoidal uh, wave and so when it's sinusoidal then it varies this way and i'm going to substitute this in here okay so if i do that then the first term okay so let's do this slowly ex is equal to ex0 times G, j omega t so if i take del square ex del x square uh, the first term ex0 is a constant oops it should not have a zero in here it's ex it's equal to the magnitude of that it's a, a phasor and a, the, the ex is really a complex quantity so then this is the magnitude of ex times e raised to j omega t if we substitute that then we get this equation here okay by substituting because uh, let's go back to that because if i take a second derivative of this guy it's only uh, the the first one is a function of x so then i get this first term and times the second term then let's do that for the second term here so the second term is minus a uh, mu uh, sigma e times the first derivative so first derivative of e to the j omega t gives me a, 
j omega uh, uh, there and then likewise here we have a second derivative so we uh, have the mu uh, the mu times epsilon and then j omega times j omega so j times j is minus 1 and then omega square so the minus sign becomes plus sign and we have the omega the square then if i just combine the terms the the these two the second two terms which have ex in them then i get this one it's actually beginning to look uh, more manageable right and and so this in turn i can just write that as equal to uh, del square ex del x square minus gamma square ex where gamma square is is equal to this quantity uh, that is um, all of this j omega mu times epsilon e plus j omega epsilon okay so now you notice that uh, ex is the uh, magnitude of electric field at any uh, position and and then the ex is really the solution to this is going to be some sort of exponential because we have second derivative of the function is equal to the function itself so it's going to be some sort of exponential decay so we really got our exponential decay except that you know this is for a semi infinite region and it's plane waves that are uh, incident uh, uh, sort of normal to this semi infinite region so it's very restrictive a restricted situation continuing on the solution for the semi infinite region so let's write uh, what we had from the previous slide we had this as my equation for describing e uh, x which is the magnitude of the uh, electric field and this gamma square here we said gamma square is equal to this so gamma would be equal to this and that gamma we can write it as some alpha plus j beta where alpha and beta can be found by equating these two and we can do this it is simple algebra but it will take a good 10 minutes of algebraic manipulation and after that we get these two expressions for alpha you can see alpha has this omega mu epsilon and so on and so it, it's simply setting these two equal you know equal algebraically we can find this alpha likewise we can find beta so if we plug in this in here in our solution that we had that uh, the electric field at any point x is related to the value at the surface times e to the minus gamma x and so for gamma i put in this alpha plus j beta and and so if i do that then i get two terms right e to the minus alpha x and then e to the minus j beta x so notice that in this expression this part is the magnitude and and because it's a complex quantity the other one gives the the phase information but the magnitude is provided by this so then magnitude of uh, ex is equal to its value at the surface times e raised to minus alpha x which is shown here so this is 
the equation that we just derived that the magnitude magnitude at any point compared to the magnitude at the surface decays exponentially we're going to see next that knowing this magnitude of electric field how can we get the power variation or the variation in the heat generation so for the heat generation term we note uh, that uh, the you know at any point here we have a electric field value and a magnetic field value right uh, e and h and so by definition the power flow the power flow is given by e cross h that's the definition and we're sticking to this vector notation because that's what we were doing the last two slides so e cross h gives me the power flow so the net uh, amount of energy de uh, deposition in a volume you know it comes in and some of it goes out so the net amount is going to be del dot divergence of this e cross h and that again if you do um, some vector uh, and and then um, algebra you know manipulation we get this quantity q equal to omega epsilon zero epsilon double prime and uh, magnitude of the e square so again uh, just to remind ourselves so omega is always this 2 pi f and epsilon 0 is a universal constant and then epsilon double prime is the property of the material that we haven't discussed in any detail um, so if i plug in our solution this was my definition of q this is how q is defined if i know the e and h i can find um, q this way so in that expression i will plug in for e as the surface value times exponential decay so if i plug in that what do i get for this semi-infinite region we have this omega epsilon zero epsilon double prime effective and e x plus which is the value here squared squared times e raised to minus 2 alpha x notice the important part it's not it's not like alpha here for electric field for power it's 2 alpha okay so then this other term in front can be interpreted as heat generation at the surface because if i plug in x equal to zero that's the value of q so this must be q at the surface so if i plot then q versus position it, this would be my q zero at the surface and then it's going to decay but it's not it's not going to decay uh, as slowly as the field uh, the, the electric field you know it's decaying this way right it's decaying this way and it's going to decay faster than that why because it's two alpha instead of one alpha um, so it's going to decay uh, faster this way okay and and so then I can rewrite this equation as q0 uh, what we just discussed times e to the minus 2 alpha x or q0 times e to the minus x over delta where delta is 1 over 2 alpha okay so delta is 1 is the power penetration there so the meaning of delta again is so q at a point delta q 
at the point delta is equal to q0 times e raised to minus at x equal to delta is delta over delta so it's q0 times e raised to minus 1 and that's 37 percent of the value at the surface so penetration depth the power penetration depth is defined as the value where uh, uh, as the distance at which the heat generation rate drops to 37 percent of its value at the surface so it gives an idea of how uniform the heating is and how far into the material does the heating penetrate what is really really critical to know that all of this discussion of um, power penetration depth and this form of solution that's this form of solution q equal to q0 e raised to minus x over delta that is really for a very very special case not for the home oven heating it's for a very thick region and uh, with plane waves kind of a very special waves that that are very far from the source of uh, we are at the very far uh, end from the source of generation so we can be we can think of them as plane waves that are incident normal to the surface and and so it's only for that scenario that we have this solution this great solution i'll write one more time it's getting very messy but uh, it's you know th this is the uh, solution uh, solution that you will see all the time but it's for a very restricted situation that why that's what i keep uh, trying to um, hammer um, so i hope that makes sense to summarize then this commonly seen form of rate of heat generation q in in watts per meter q uh, decaying exponentially with position into the material is really for a very special situation and that special situation is a plane waves not the kind of waves that we have in a um, home oven a plane waves hitting a very thick region in that the this equation says q is going to vary exponentially like that q varies as q0 times e raised to x over delta and um, this penetration depth is the distance over which a 63 percent of the energy uh, reduction or, or the um, heat generation reduction happens or at a distance of delta we have 37 percent of the value at the uh, surface so that is what we know as the penetration depth and this situation this solution it's very important to know that it's for this very restricted situation however the penetration depth defined from this solution is extremely useful at a minimum it gives qualitative understanding in uh, what happens in a oven heating uh, which is what we're going to do next uh, so the most important thing is that this solution the exponential decay solution is not valid for home oven heating we will see the details later but the very next video has to do with the dielectric properties you know those properties like epsilon double prime that we used in this uh, in this video we haven't really uh, defined them 
we haven't talked about what they mean and how much do they vary for the foods that's what we're going to talk about in the next video